हेलो मिस्टर सर मिस्टर सर हेली सर सर आद बादा में सर के जब मेल आईडी को आगे लंते लिंक को हाँ हाँ कल से दिन ही ना सर रीसेंट मार देगा मार दिन नोड चेक मार देगा थैंक यू हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन सर एवरीवन आर देयर सर स्पीकर सर देयर सर गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन सर हां न्यू हम जॉइन अगेन गुड मॉर्निंग सर सोमशेखर सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर ಇದು ಲಿಂಕ್ ನೀವು ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಲಿಂಕ್ ಬಂದಿರುತ್ತೆ ನೋಡಿ ಇವಾಗ ಹ್ಮ इला रजिस्टर मार दिया है न्यू हेलो रजिस्टर मारे रजिस्टर मारा तो उन्हें नंबर रो मोबाइल नंबर रो ईमेल आईडी आकर तो रजिस्टर दंगे इम्मीडिएटली वन दिन कर स्टार लिंक कर स्टार डायरेक्ट यार सर दो नंबर रो नन नंबर रो मार बड़े न्यू आए मॉइनिंग मारे मॉइनिंग मारे
is stop video na so, so good morning sir all of you uh, can see me yes yes all of you can hear me sir listen to me yes yes please sure yes professor continue yes sir yes, sir sir let's ah. start college video yes yes college video please start mohidin mm -hmm. मोहितीन कॉलेज वीडियो हाँ सर स्टार्टिंग सर कॉलेज वीडियो मुस्ताक प्लीज हेल्प हिम ओके
good morning everyone i welcome you all for the webinar titled sensitization of environmental laws for pollution control with focus on covid 19 is a sincere attempt to bring out awareness regarding various acts and legal provisions to regulate the impact of human activities on the environment i am pleased to recognize the presence of illustrious speakers and galaxy of participants from the industry and academia including iits iiscs nits bits vitu jntu uh, bu jain amiti srm etc on behalf of civil engineering department hosting the webinar and i thank the management and principal for the giving the permission and special thanks to evp sir i uh, proceed this uh, i call upon dr shashi shankar a to proceed the function he is having almost 36 years of experience and 30 years of research experience almost in all the fields and he has uh, produced five phd's and he has now research, giving guidance to 15 research scholars over to you sir thank you hello good morning everybody and I, i think you are able to listen me and uh, <clears throat> department of civil engineering was started in 2013 it's a very new department uh, in our college and uh, we have been able to achieve a lot in a very short span of time with the help of our honorable principal and also the honorable management and uh, we have been able to do a lot of consultancy work and research and development work also recently we have been um, <coughs> inspected for starting a center for uh, research in civil engineering in our department so our uh, department can boast of uh, uh, having five research scholars in a short time from now and we have also an outbound center of excellence called c geeta which is nothing but center for global environment and eco friendly technology applications in civil engineering so through this we have adopted a village called nurond swami betta 120 kilometers from bengaluru in accordance with the act norms of adoption of villages for total development and our students have been engaged in the project work and internship over there and of course uh, we are designing a, what is called a check dam for the water security of the village nurond swami betta we have been awarded uh, A, a, a funding from kscst for the same project so of course we have been continuously being awarded the funding from kscst every year year on year for uh, environmental friendly projects and uh, we are very happy to uh, say that uh, we have got uh, r 1500 pentax machines around six machines using which uh, we are able to do our uh, research and development and also consultancy and also uh, survey camps at gati subramanyam so we have got a full fledged uh, uh, laboratories in uh, all the fields of civil engineering namely concrete technology strength of materials or name anything geotechnical engineering environmental engineering hydraulics engineering etc and uh, our uh, civil engineering department has produced three batches of uh, students Uh, and all of them are well placed and they are doing very well start i think some of them are, uh, are studying in uh, the foreign countries also so one uh, jayshree is uh, made her uh, great uh, fortune in us in california she did her ms from california university and there are other students in dubai and other places across the world and also some of our students have shifted from civil engineering to artificial intelligence and uh, some of them are working for the mnc companies for very high salaries so civil engineering department just generally is not simply you know using <clears throat> uh, civil engineers but offshoot also i now welcome our honorable principal dr ag e. nataraj to just give the welcome address and also uh, speak about our uh, manage honorable management and introduce our honorable management sir over to you sir Dr. Ajit Atraj. Hello, Namaskara. Namaskara. Namaskar, sir. Good morning to all. 
for participating in this webinar. This is the 14th in series organized by our college, AMC Engineering College in series. Today, I wish to welcome our honorable speakers and extend my sincere thanks to them, namely Sri Somashekar Sri Badami, Member Secretary, District Legal Services Authority, Bengaluru. And also, I heartily welcome Professor M.K. Ramesh, National Law School of India University, Bengaluru, and another panelist, our own person, Sri M. N. Tipe Swami, retired superintendent engineer, BWSSP, Bengaluru. My sincere thanks on behalf of the management and all MNC, all our AMCEC families. Welcome to you, sir. I just take two minutes or three minutes to explain our, about our institution. AMC Engineering College was started in the year 1999 and run and managed by Paramahamsa Foundation Trust under the chairmanship of Dr. K. R. Paramahamsa was got his doctorate from University of California, USC. And also Vice Chairperson Srimati Geeta Paramahamsa, Ms. Rohat, Ms. Monica Kallori, Vice President of Paramahamsa Foundation Trust, Mr. Rahul Kallori, Executive Vice President of Paramahamsa Foundation Trust. AMC Engineering College is spread over 52 acres of land with a total built up area of 10 lakh square feet. AMC EC has a total intake of around 1,300 students every year. There are more than 5,000 students in our college campus. The college has a good infrastructure and highly qualified and committed faculty imparting quality technical education. At present, the college offers courses leading to BE degree in seven disciplines. Number one, computer science and engineering with an intake of 240. Mechanical engineering with an intake of 240. Electronics and communication engineering with an intake of 180. Information sciences and engineering with an intake of 120. Electrical and electronics engineering with an intake of 60. Civil engineering with an intake of 60. And mechatronics with an intake of 120. From this academic year, we are starting two new courses, namely artificial intelligence and machine learning, and another one, aeronautical engineering, which are our most wanted streams in engineering. Also, the Karnataka government has starting sanctioned 5,000 acres of land to start an SCZ near Kempegoda International Airport for this aerospace engineering and also artificial engineering. We have six MTech courses, and also we have MBA and MCA in our institution. All 10 departments, including science department, are having research centers. We have also department of inter internal interdepartmental research centers. A few other things to about our institution is the college is accredited by NAC for five years from 2016 to 2020, 21. All eligible branches of our college were NBA accredited under OBE for three years from 2018 to 2021 for the second time. Our institution is affiliated to Vishveshwaraya Technological University. As far as our labor lab laboratories are considered, we have well-equipped laboratories, state-of-art laboratories. We have a good facility in our library. We have more than 75,000 volumes of books and tens of thousands of e-journals and e-books. We have centers of excellence in each department. And our uh, research centers, there are about more than 60 staff members have registered themselves for research PhD in different branches, streams of engineering. Also, we have seven patents in our institutions. We have a lot of things what going on for the general societal needs also. We have been backed up by the fantastic, fantastic management for Mahamsa Foundation Trust and the dedicated staff members. In this year alone, that is 19, 2020, our staff members have published more than 300 publications in peer-reviewed journals. We are doing something for the society also. 
we have adopted village in and our institution also our management is doing a lot to the society needs so with all this i once again welcome our panelists our speakers shri somashekar c badami professor m k ramesh and m n tipeswar i congratulate heartily professor sheshankar and his team for organizing this webinar our institution is organizing webinars continuously in this covid period and this is i proudly say that this is the 14th in series and we continue to do for furthermore till the problems are persisting i once again thank each and everyone for giving me this opportunity to speak about my institution and my management thank you namaskar ellarum olladagi all the best for all the participants thank you okay. thank you very much sir thank you i request uh, professor mohiddin to introduce the uh, the resource persons okay sir first uh, i will uh, go on to somshekar si badami sir somshekar si badami sir is a senior civil judge and member secretary dlsa bangalore okay. urban he was practicing as an advocate for 14 years and in judicial services since 2003 till now for a period of 14 years having experience in various fields of law as a young graduate he fought for the cause of environmental along the tungabhadra river in ranebennur thank you sir i welcome you once again sir now i will go for uh, dr m k ramesh sir he has done bsc llm phd from mysore university he is working as a professor national law school of indian university since 1997 he has served as a vice chancellor national law school of india university his area of specialization include international law human rights law environmental law and natural resources and management law land water forest wildlife biodiversity and agriculture he has having about 39 years of experience as a law teacher and over 2 years as commercial tax officer in government of karnataka he has published around 60 research articles and 5 books and he is the founder of editor of indian journal of india university namely center of environmental law education research and advocacy sierra 1997 and common cells 2009 and environmental law clinic 2012 and uh, he has a institutional representative member for india in the international environmental law academy ottawa canada and he has a member for human ethics committee iisc member stem cell research ethics committee and he is a fellow full bright full bright fellow in 2005 2006 he has a uh, yeah, expert law advisor and registered to house committee on lake enrollment government of karnataka 2016-17 and he has worked as a uh, expert committee for various organizations uh, namely task group on involving uh, comprehensive water policy for karnataka and uh, mp uh, state biodiversity board and also reforming biodiversity law and he has uh, having some of the members for uh, membership uh, life membership for asec and uh, center for sustainable development bangalore and he has vi- visited various countries uk us uh, everything we have of uh, i welcome you sir ah yes sir i am uh, engineer mn tipeswami sir Uh, he is the ex uh, he has worked as a ex uh, super in uh, chief uh, in time super uh, in time engineer in the bwss board uh, he has uh, done his uh, b bachelor of civil engineering and post graduation in environmental law engineering he has worked as a bwssp for 34.5 years and retired as a chief engineer super time after retirement working as a freelance consultant for both public and private institution from last 15 years including national and international companies during his career in bwssp apart from working in o and m of water 
and sewerage system introduce highly innovative projects in wastewater reuse ict in water and wastewater sectors such as scada telemetry gis applications of it in all session he is the responsible for first international funding of bwssb from oecf oversee economic cooperation fund which is named as jica now for implementing cwss 1v phase 1 for rupees 1542 crores and later cwssb 1v phase 2 for rupees 3600 crores to bring out 270 mld and 500 mld water respectively for the river kaveri and he is responsible for getting bilateral funding from france and local hutco for supplementary funds implementing wastewater recycling plants of 60 and 10 mld plants at uh, v valley and elanka respectively in 1994 and he is also uh, joined in hands of preparation gis with french company for the first time in water sector in india purchase equipment for leak detection of underground pipelines and leakages from the france he has work uh, he has responsible for preparation of master plan for water sewage storm water and solid waste for next 25 years up to 2025 with the bilateral funding from australia where 90% of the funds from australia and rest 10% by bwssb in the form of manpower and accommodation work as a project director for 2.5 years in preparation of 35 documents and uh, some of the contributions and he uh, he is also the member for various organizations and uh, he has got uh, several awards uh, for contributing uh, achievements are bwssp engineer association has recognized my services and awarded bangalore international airport authority has recognized my services and gave and award samaj seva samiti registered in bangalore uh, also recognized him and gave an award everything about water has included uh, in his uh, hall of fame and gave an award thank you sir i welcome you sir over to uh, sir sir dr no i request uh, dr mk ramesh sir to give his presentation over to dr ramesh sir <clears throat> Dr. M. K. Ramesh, sir. Ah uh, yes. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Uh, S. P. is the principal of the institute, uh, Dr. Natraj. Professor Shashi Shankar. The fellow panelists, Justice Tom Shankar Badani, and uh, one of the finest engineers that we have. and an administrator in karnataka uh, mr kitesh swami voice is not you. clear mm. uh, can you hear me now yeah it's better now yeah okay okay i will come closer to the monitor I hope it should be can you hear me now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh, <clears throat> yeah i was just uh, prefacing my presentation with uh, uh, thanks to the organization for having invited me for this uh, legal literacy program on environmental law and related issues uh, it's really a privilege to be in this panel because yesterday i learned uh, um, uh, in, in our preliminary uh, dry run for this program that there is a connect between me and uh, mr shashi shankar and uh, mr somshekha uh, way back in three decades back uh, the, the connecting link is uh, mr hiramat who championed the cause of uh, the quite a good number of environmental movements in karnataka and this is one such and as a law teacher i would say that uh, the harihar polyfibers case was one of the pioneering efforts which actually ushered in new environmental 
Presidents in the state of Karnataka. And something which was a very big lesson for pollution control measures in India as well. A, a landmark uh, judgment of the higher judiciary. Purva. Something else is coming, you see. Ordo Bertata, Vidya Bertata. It is coming. Hello. Hello, Dr. M.K. Ramesh, sir. Hello. Sir, you are... You are muted, sir. Is it muted, sir? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, I think the connection is a little unstable. Uh, are you able to hear me now? Yes, yes. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah, please uh, be close to the screen. Sir. Ah, yes, sir. Am I audible? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think the connection has become a little unstable. Let me see what I can uh, do at my best. Uh, before, I would like to start with uh, the assigned task that has been given by the Legal Services Authority and the AMC uh, of familiarizing uh, every participant here with the basics of environmental law, a bird's eye view of that. Let me show you a small clipping, a video clipping. Um, I, I would request Ms. Moidi to show the clipping before I get started. The video clipping, please. Mr. Moidin? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, over to Mustak, sir. Mustak, sir. Tell me, sir. Mind, sir. Sir, uh, video clipping of uh, Dr. M.K. Ramesh, sir. I don't it, have, it, sir. It looks like taking more time. So mm -hmm. should I do without? Ah, yes. Okay, proceed. I, I think that appears to be a problem with the video. Can I can I proceed without that then? Ah yes, sir, sure sir. Mr. Moidin? Ah yes, sir. Sir, please uh, proceed without the video, sir. Am I audible? Uh, uh, is there a problem with the video? Hello? Mr. Moidin? Mr. Shashi Shankar? 
Sir, please proceed without the video, sir, presently. We are uh, listening to you. Dr. M.K. Ramesh, sir. Am I audible to you, Dr. M.K. Ramesh? Dr. M.K. Ramesh. Hello. Hello. Am I, I audible to you? Yeah, please connect, sir, Can and uh, go ahead without video, sir. Hello. Go ahead without yes, video, sir. Suddenly, but am I? You are audible, yeah, sir. Yeah, I can go. Yes, oh, sir. Okay. Yes. So I can go without the video, but then uh, can the slides be shown, if that's possible? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. You can run through, sir. Okay. Then in that event, uh, let me just start with uh, a few preliminary remarks as to why one should know about environmental law. As one would get familiarized with this body of law, one would learn that this is not pure law. Environmental law is a transdisciplinary discourse, which transcends all disciplines and perhaps include within it every conceivable human discipline that we know of. There is something for an economist, there's a lot for a biochemist. There's quite a bit of it for engineers, bioengineers, and people who have something or the other to do with engineering and in relation to developmental activities and environment. You have everything for someone who is into political organization. There is quite a bit with regard to public administration, management, you name it. Every conceivable discipline has something or the other to do with this body of law called as environmental law. And to that extent, I must say that one is not unfamiliar to environmental law for the simple reason that this is one body of law which is all about life, life support, and something that would sustain life, and something that would actually make us live life and the quality of life to the fullest if one respects the rule of law. It is not just a compilation of a set of rules and regulations, but it deals with life and life forms, their interplay and interrelationship, the use and abuse of life forms and the kind of impact that human activities would have on environment and certain safeguard measures as to conserve, protect, and improve the quality of life. So, if one examines any piece of legislation concerning environment, I must say that one would not consider it as something pure legalese, but it is something which is very close to oneself because it concerns one's life. It brings in some kind of an order in the way we organize our life, lifestyles, and things like that. In fact, the video clipping was essentially meant to show that and demonstrate to every one of you that there is something to do with human indiscretion, human negligence and callous indifference to the resources that are available all around, all around him, which is a bounty of nature, which could have been put to use in a sustainable way and being put into different kinds of uses which they should not have had gotten into. All the same, since coming to the main aspect of my presentation, uh, can we run the second uh, slide, please? Are you able to show the second slide? Or shall I go ahead still? Mr. Mohitin, are you running the second slide? Or the slides are taking a while? PPT is not visible, yeah. Anyway, the PPT actually refers to a panoramic view of the international legal developments concerning environmental law. How did this particular idea of environmental law emerge? One must know that this is one of those nascent and evolving bodies of law, perhaps one of the most dynamic bodies of law, which is of fairly recent origin 
in terms of international interventions leading to national accommodation and application of certain prescriptions of law for taking care of our environment. Yeah, there is, there is an inquiry that this, the screen is not shared. Is, is PPT uh, made available? Uh, don't bother about the PPT. Let me just give you the brief uh, overview of how at the international level the law evolved. And why should one know about the international law? For the obvious reason that much of what we have at the domestic environmental law is either inspired from or derived from or is in conformity with what has been prescribed at the international level. It starts with a grave concern expressed by the community of nations of the environmental crisis that we have gotten into. The resources are depleting. The species are becoming extinct. The life becomes untenable, unsustainable. And over a period of time, the realization is that this is only one world where human existence is possible. And this finite world, which has finite resources, is not able to support our avaricious, greedy needs and demands. And so to come up with a far more responsible way of living, the leaders among the community of nations came together and converged in a place called Stockholm in the year 1972. That was the first global environmental summit. It was called the Environmental Summit on Human Environment. And there, they came up with a resolution that yes, our way of life, the way we are managing our environment is such that we are on a precipice and we are at the tipping point of losing everything. And that once we lose something that is there with us and which will no longer be there if you continue to be the same kind of way of living, then there would be no future, not just for humanity, for any life or life forms on earth. Life would be snuffed out. And earth, as people know, is the only one small speck in the galaxy which is suitable for life and life forms to survive and flourish. And so the decision was made at the international level that each and every country and the leadership will start working on evolving their legal framework so as to control, contain and limit the impact of human activities through the instrumentalities of law, institutions of enforcement, so as to come up with a formal responsible living on earth. It is not the other way of saying that there was no law concerning the environment, but in terms of organization, in terms of focused attention to environmental issues, there was not much of a care or a concern shown because everyone thought that environment is free, it's plentifully available, that one could use and abuse every which way one liked. And the realization came much, much later, as late as 1972, to really think of getting back to the drawing board to make us realize that we need to really come up with something much more than what we have done to act far more responsibly. And one of the things that was done was, under the ages of the United Nations, a program was unleashed called the United Nations Environment Program, under whose ages a quite a bit of international environment legal regulations were evolved. And then the same was being helped and was helping the nations to come up with their own respective pieces of legislations on different sectors of human activity concerning the environment. The second environmental summit that took place was in the year 1992 at a place called Rio de Janeiro. And this environmental summit was referred to as the Environment On and a Summit On Development and Human Activities or Human Development and Environmental Conservation. And in this summit, they took stock of the developments of the two decades between 1972 to 1992 
as to what has been done at the international level and what has been done at the domestic level. And the sum total conclusion was it was not sufficient to really ensure that the global environment is brought back from a dangerous and a precarious position to something that is more livable. And there it was an idea that came which actually brought together two almost contradicting elements of human life. One of the real desire for conserving and protecting the environment on one side, and on the other, the immense desire of humanity to develop economically. And for that, they came up with a new coinage called as the notion of sustainable development to save our common future. And quite a good number of international legal developments took place in that. But before I just get into the details of these laws, I must say that there are certain basic principles that we should know as to what exactly would constitute the basic ethic of managing our environment. The first and the foremost principle, which is a commonsensical principle that every one of us should know, should practice in everyday life, and should, has, should form the very basis of the interpretation by courts of law, when they're interpreting the laws, by every administration, when they're implementing these laws, is to apply the principle of good neighborliness, the principle of good neighborliness, which is a commonsensical principle, which says that you have every right to deal with whatever that you have, your resources. You can use it, you can manage it, you can transfer it, you can share it with others, but you must use your property in such a way as not to cause harm, alarm, inconvenience, annoyance to anybody else. That kind of a responsible living is one of the basic principles of environmental law that we have. The second principle is that environmental and environmental resources are not free goods. They are available for everyone's use. It's a common resource, a common property for everyone's use, but for nobody's abuse. And should anybody misuses these environmental resources, then he becomes liable in law for having, to that extent, caused a damage or degradation to that aspect of the environment. This is called as a principle of polluter pays. One who pollutes has a primary duty, number one, of cleaning up whatever dirt that he has caused, and number two, the cost of cleaning up that he has to pay, and number three, as an exemplary thing, that he has to pay a penalty that he shall act far more responsibly than what he was because the environment does not bring, belong to him alone, but to every one of us. The polluter pays principle. Uh, I will call you back later. I, I am in a conference. Okay. I'm sorry. The third principle that one has to keep in mind when uh, one starts understanding environmental law is what is called as the principle of precaution. Principle of precaution. Normally, when we have some problems, we start acting on those problems. We will try to come up with certain measures to contain the harm, contain the difficulty, like the COVID-19 that we are experiencing now. But environmental law tells us something much more than that, that it requires us to act with caution, to anticipate a perceived harm, the potential harm, and to act well in advance, anticipate and act to prevent the harm, to take such precautionary measures as to ensure that enough safeguards are put in place to see to it that the harm is either minimized, reduced, or eliminated. And third, when the harm that's going to visit us is something which is unavoidable, then you need to face it, meet the challenge, and then deal with that in the most effective way as to ensure that the problem would not recur. So the principle of precaution has four major elements, 
anticipate, avoid, act, and look for alternatives. That if the problem is inevitable, if, for example, if one wants to set up a major industrial plant in one particular place, and if the seismic reports are such that it is an unstable land on which this industry cannot exist, then you should look for an alternative site which will be most congenial for enabling and facilitating that particular industry to come up so as to help in development and at the same time conserve the environment as well and maximum benefits derived for the people. There is something called as a cost and benefit and analysis of that need have to be done before you take a developmental decision. This is the principle of precaution that is being brought into application. The fourth principle I was just mentioning about the notion of sustainable development, that every generation of people, every community, every nation has a right to develop. This is a basic right that has been assured to every one of us and we can assert and exercise that right. But this right of ours should be such that it shall not in any way, while exercising this right, shall not in any way diminish similar rights of the generations to come. It is called as a principle of intergenerational equity woven in the notion of sustainable development. That across generations, people have a right to use those resources that are available to them. But the right that one generation has is something which is also the same right that is available for the next generation. And so, while exercise my right, of development, I should ensure that similar such right of the generation subsequent is in no way harmed or in any way disturbed by me. That means I need have to use resources in such a way that the resources are perennially available to me in a sustainable way. And after I have left, there should be resources available for the generations to come to make similar such use and derive benefits out of that, the notion of sustainable development. Then there is this principle of public trust, that the resources that are available belongs to the people of India. Every one of us have a right over the resources. But these resources over which we have a right need have to be a regulated right because if only some of us corner all the resources for our benefit, it will be to the disadvantage and detriment of others. And for that, there has to be somebody who would be monitoring, who would be regulating, who would be limiting our resource use and its application, and no better entity than the government, which has been given the role of a public trustee. The government and government agencies are supposed to act in public interest all the while, and as public trustees, they hold the custodial care of all the resources, they monitor our activities, they regulate our activities, penalize for any violations that we cause. So the government and government agencies are the operating arm of governments who actually facilitate our resource use in a sustainable way and its management. You have a tripod of a relationship between the resources, the people, and the state. The state and state agencies are public trustees. The resources are the trust, and the people are the beneficiaries, and they're also referred to as environmental stewards. As an environmental steward, I and you are beneficiaries and at the same time have a responsibility to protect, prevent any kind of an action which would deplete the resources, act responsibly to ensure that the resources that are available are not diminished either in content or quality or in the use. These are the basic principles that actually dominate and govern environmental governments and all the environmental laws that we have. In the last slide that I have, I have a snapshot of the all laws that are something or other to do with the environment. To put it in a nutshell, the whole environmental legal regime is all pervading. It is there in every conceivable law that we have. And not less than some 250 odd legislations deal with environment and its resources. But a handful of legislations do 
really deal with environment completely with a focused way in a substantial manner. You have the legislations concerning pollution control and waste management. You have an overarching law for that called the Environment Protection Act that was made in the year 1986. And that came as a kind of a reaction to the Bhopal gas tragedy that we had. I don't know how many of us know that the worst industrial environmental catastrophe that ever occurred on Earth happened in India. As a lesson from that, we crafted a new law, an overarching law called the Environment Protection Act, that saving generations of people, including the present generation, <coughs> for that we need a robust body of law. And under the aegis of Environment Protection Act, we have the pollution control regime, we have the waste management law, we have the law in relation to environment impact assessment, we have the law in relation to <coughs> coastal regulations, we have the law concerning every human activity which would impact upon certain species of plants and animal varieties which may pose some kind of a danger <coughs> or a damage to those species which are interconnected with our lives like the forest, the wildlife, the biological diversity. For their conservation protection, we have a host of laws called the Indian Forest Act, <coughs> the Forest Conservation Act, the Biodiversity Act, the Wildlife Protection Act, the Forest Rights Act, and you have a host of other legislations like Plant Varieties Law, which actually deals with, number one, conservation of certain ecosystems which are very much important, not just for protection and conservation of life and life forms there, but also for humanity at large, because of their presence, the ecological services that are rendered, our lives are made far more valuable, the quality of life would improve. And so their survival, their flourishing, is as important as anything else. And for that, you have a legal design for that. So you have national parks, sanctuaries, wildlife corridors, you have uh, critical wildlife habitats, which are created for that particular purpose. You have a host of departments, the forest and the wildlife authorities who deal with that. At the same time, within the forest, people who live there are also being given certain rights and entitlements. Their rights are recognized under a Forest Rights Act to the extent that their exercise of that right would in no way diminish the forest resources, their conservation concerns, their management and things like that. Like that, you have a host of other laws which deal with human activities concerning industry. Industrial relations laws, the Factories Act, and the laws in relation to industrial management have something or the other to do with environmental protection of in terms of the design of machineries that you have of the use of those resources for various developmental activities in the production processes to squarely come within a legal regime which goes by the description of pollution control where you have air prevention and control of pollution act that was made in the year 1981 Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act, about which the two other panelists that we have, uh, uh, Mr. Tipeswamy and uh, uh, Justice Somshika, would be reflecting more upon, wherein they will be talking to you about the Pollution Control Board, which has a lot to do with the pollution control and waste management as a nodal agency. Then you have legislations which deal with certain eco sensitive zones that we have, which are very vital for the survival and the kind of sustenance, both in terms of the food that is required to be made available, and second, for the kind of support that it would give for, not only for the very plant and animal life that is there, but also for the very people who are dependent on that. And these eco-sensitive zones
सर वन सेकेंड सर आई एम डाउनलोडिंग इन दैट वन
am I audible? Hello. Sir Ramesh, sir, can you share your screen? Can you share your screen? Try. Yeah. Are you able to? Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Proceed. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, I, I have already gone through uh, most of it, <clears throat> but let me just quickly uh, round up uh, my submission to you about the Indian Environmental Legal Order. I was mentioning about the, the richness and the diversity and the depth of this body of law, <clears throat> which covers every conceivable human activity, which has everything to do with resource management, which has everything to do with uh, uh, protection of plants and animal life. It has a lot to do with uh, the way in which we put Hello, sir. Uh, Doctor M K Ramesh sir is not there, sir. I think uh, some network issue has uh, lagged out. I think we'll continue with uh, Doctor Tipeswami. Uh, yes. yes, sir. Mm. Please over to Tipeswami, sir. Sir Tipeswami, sir, you can run the PPT. The best for me, sir, you are able to listen. Yes. Sir, the best for me, sir, you need to unmute, sir. Screen sharing is stopped, right, sir? Mustak, sir? Sir, you can close yours, sir. This is not mine, sir. That is sir's only. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry, sir. Are you getting it now? Yes, sir. We are able to hear. Because proceed. Well, not only that, are you able to see the... Um... Sir, Hello. Yes, are... sir. We are able to see. Please proceed, sir. Okay. So... Sir, you should... Sir, sorry, sir. You need to on your video, sir. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Thank you, sir. Can you see now? Yes, sir. We are seeing. Uh, can you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
okay first of all first of all uh, my sincere thanks to dr sheshankar dr nataraj dr see dr somshekar and dr ramesh for uh, having given an opportunity to speak to you on the water uh, prevention and control act uh, uh, with a uh, focus on uh, covid 19 i think i am going to talk on that so let us uh, quickly getting it uh, getting into that uh, what is that i am going to do is uh, uh, briefly i will mention about the act of 1974 which is very very important which has come into effect and how to monitor water pollution in the country and followed by that what the changes that has happened etc uh, very few minutes and secondly the the scenario of, i mean present what's up the scenario niti ayog and uh, niti ayog report of government of india what it says about and uh, thirdly uh, we will discuss on covid 19 i uh, see what is happening around whether it is available with the whether covid uh, corona is available in drinking water and waste water is something we should also discuss i i take few minutes on that and uh, reports of uh, who experts uh, from other university etc so followed by that we will present water pollution on surface of ground water etc what is happening in bangalore in the other other part of the world and finally i will uh, see the waste water is something very important and uh, which needs to be uh, i mean addressed in order to make it as a resource and with that background i will uh, end up with my uh, my <coughs> uh, uh, presentation so first of all uh, see uh, sanitation is more important than independence uh, our uh, see our father of the nation um, mahatma gandhi in as early as 1925 has said that see the, <laughs> it is more important uh, to have a better sanitation incidentally i will show you how important for a quality of life what mr see R ramesh has told so we need to have a good sanitation which imp imparts uh, see, basically in the drinking water and also see the waste water that is generated and the thirdly this uh, way, uh, solid waste that is generated these are encompasses and sanitation and if we really maintain this i think we can have a quality of life that is actually you find it many of the developed countries which we need to do it in a big way in india also so uh, this is exactly the what the <clears throat> so uh, coming back to our uh, see i i would like to give a, a brief of as uh, what is most important is in, in the sense uh, uh, water is such an important uh, in in the sense uh, see is uh, out of the what total water available in the world i think we have a share of 70% for agriculture 20% for uh, industry and 10% for residential usage or domestic usage i think in this context um, of course india is it's an average but india is 80% plus is used for agriculture and very little on uh, say 8 or 9% for um, uh, industry etc and uh, rest is for the domestic use now if you have to really and most importantly see this uh, entire water that is available in indian uh, for india uh, out of the total mm -hmm. precipitation that happens Uh, for a population of 17.5 percent of the world, see today uh, 7.8 billion is the population of the world, and India is 1.3 almost billion, and we are getting a share of only 4 percent. As against China, which is about 20 percent, is getting about 7 percent. So, see why I am just referring this point is that water is such an important commodity for this population. we have to share it very 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 accurately very very precisely and see that everybody gets water uh, for uh, all these uh, purposes particularly agriculture uh, industry and uh, say for a drinking purpose and most importantly is the drinking purpose now coming back on this issue see pollution control board has been enacted uh, keeping in view of that uh, in order to see that the quality of water is maintained i uh, see in, in all our uh, see um resources basically river lakes as uh, streams <coughs> ground water and every all these have to be kept in such a uh, qualitatively so that we should use them properly and for all the all the purpose that we need as I, as i already said so fundamentally in order to do that as early in 1974 water prevention control act was formulated with the central act of cbcb and the state acts as uh, 
like state pollution control board so each state have their own con uh, pollution control board each of them have been given their responsibility as to how to monitor this thing under the, this law the objective of the whole thing is maintaining and restoring wholesome of water by prevention and control of water pollution and the establishment of central and state boards conferring powers for the assigning the <clears throat> assigning the functions of the board so now see just to give an uh, effective dates for uh, see of the original act was 1974 of and uh, followed by that in 1982 there was a first amendment and second amendment was uh, in 1991 and uh, this uh, this water act is applicable to industries operation and of uh, uh, industries and operation and processes uh, local bodies including municipalities metros etc etc and every person individually also this is effectively and so coming to what is water pollution pollution is uh, perhaps it is not to be I, I, everybody knows about this but in order to give a, a definition of water pollution is a contamination of water bodies uh, lakes rivers ocean aquifers and ground water very often human activities it occurs when the pollutants that is particularly particles chemicals or substances that make water contaminated are discharged directly or indirectly into the water bodies without enough treatment to get rid of water see here i want to just emphasize see what it was there to uh, see a few years back and now is a tremendous change in the see in the chemical um, um, inputs are uh, putting into the water bodies particularly see, see there are pharmaceutical uh, uh, see uh, pharmaceutically the lot of uh, pollutants are getting into that and we have also pfc pf pfas polypropylene alkaline substances are coming which are creating a very very uh, difficult scenario in the, the developed countries and which is also causing cancer and many other issues and uh, see today whole of this uh, see is polluting our uh, water and unless we treat them properly i think it will not be fit for see for purpose that we that we are need to do that i think uh, see followed by that see we have uh, we have a water act the definitions of see such contamination of water this is actually the water act which enunciates uh, such as alteration of the physical and chemical and biological properties of water such discharges of any sewage or trade effluent or any other liquid or gaseous or solid substances into water and is and it may likely to create a nuisance so followed by that is the trade effluents water act also uh, clearly defines uh, what is trade effluent and sewage effluent includes of uh, see, trade effluent basically from industry and sewage effluent is basically from domestic sewage particularly see the most of the municipalities as which are uh, discharging so without treatment of uh, sewage uh, is one of the greatest uh, problem in the so giving some uh, basic uh, re uh, things that what are happening now is uh, see let me tell you what is happening in uh, pollution in kaveri river river kaveri so uh, see uh, close to nanjan gudu i think uh, there is a, uh, see even uh, in 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 canada so you uh, see the, the vishakantanige charande neeri na abhishek i think this is something what uh, see has been <laughs> mentioned i think the river kaveri originates from kurg and uh, see karnataka pass, pass through nanjan go there see in the during lean periods see, the quality of water is so bad that it is it is uh, fully polluted from the upstream uh, see municipal municipalities and industries and what not and that water is i mean very bad and uh, that is going to be used for uh, see uh, uh, making a uh, uh, see um, um, <laughs> gods uh, abhishek etc so uh, this is the scenario i think uh, this is happening see catchment management is so important i think uh, catchment management encompasses various uh, stakeholders and ultimately unless they come together and uh, retard this pollution abate this pollution i think uh, this our rivers are not going to be i mean going to be clean so this is something even uh, see in this case see neighboring state is also uh, filed a complaint i mean uh, uh, gone to the court of supreme court see that we are very badly polluting uh, water of kaveri so similarly see if you look at you see what is happening in bangalore uh, this is now being shown all over the world also see the belandur tank which is one of the the biggest tank in um, in bangalore He is now facing the wrath i think in the sense we are we are putting a lot of uh, chemicals uh, see ba basically uh, detergents uh, <clears throat> phosphorus and etc which creates a froth uh, 
as you and uh, this is a um, even people cannot move on on the road which is passing through that uh, stream etc in sometimes there are a lot of fires in, in the lake itself and that is something which we have to really think of but when once uh, the re recently that when covid uh, see, first uh, lockdown was there i think things have totally changed that means so we are uh, industries and uh, the our uh, <coughs> residential sewage is uh, clean but uh, see in order to see that so we have to maintain this industrial pollutants to be regulated and meeting the requirement of law see another important uh, uh, <coughs> river uh, which is also flowing in uh, um, see the, the, the <coughs> western part of uh, bangalore is vishamavati valley uh, which originates from uh, sanki sanki tank and also flows up to and giants kaveri this is also the similar case i think you can see before lockdown and after lockdown how things were changed so this is uh, exactly why there is a huge pollution that is taking place industry effluents coming from pinya and magdi road lot of uh, industries are coming up and this is again i said you can see in bangalore and any other place in the in, in the country you can see that uh, see fish killing because of the uh, <coughs> reducing of uh, dissolved oxygen in water by introducing uh, putting lot of sewage overflow of sewage etc into the lake i think we have seen enough uh, uh, i mean killing of uh, fishes in the uh, lakes i think recently also happened in bangalore i think that that, that is where we should really take care of uh, how to uh, treat this uh, pollutants and uh, and see that the quality of water is put back into the lakes and uh, rivers now coming back i think uh, with this background i would like to tell you this is government of india niti ayog which is uh, which is uh, the placement of uh, i mean planning commission has come out with recently a, a tremendous uh, report on water and uh, this it's an it's a highly uh, a, a very important because uh, in india at least 2 lakh people die every year due to lack of access to safe water so this is exactly what uh, ha what is happening we are we are polluting and people are drinking water without even uh, see in many cases there is no treatment at all even the ground water is very badly i mean polluted see take for example even bangalore uh, there uh, there was a uh, lot of mines uh, and geology tested in uh, seen more than 3000 samples out of that see more than 50% is unfit for drinking there are all sorts of uh, um, chemical pollution uh, basically see um, our nitrogen sir nitrogen and phosphorus uh, and even arsenic fluoride more, many of these things are beyond the limits and that is causing also so in um, many of the cities and towns this is a biggest problem and uh, see th this is exactly what where we are looking and uh, see in currently in india this is exactly india is currently ranked 120 out of 120 countries say we are ranked 120th this is the, see saying the water quality index that itself shows how bad we are our uh, ma managing our water quality in terms of, uh, because we are not treating this water to the required standards as prescribed by the government of india or the pollution control standard i said that is the reason why the quality of water is and that is why we are see this uh, all sort of problems are i mean uh, diseases are coming perhaps you are aware 80% of the diseases are because of the water so uh, the another important area is uh, see india's water crisis is 70% uh, is india's water is contaminated 75% of the household have drink, no drinking water in their premises 85% of the rural household do not have access to piped water this is a very we are also see even the neighboring states are much better than us so that is the scenario so coming back here in see how water bodies are polluted i want i would like to uh, press upon the water quality in lakes if you see there are uh, five um, <coughs> um, um, indicator sorry, uh, sorry uh, five uh, see it has been um, uh, any water body can be recognized in the, see, the five parameters and a b c d e and uh, in these cases uh, particularly a indicates that uh, the, the the five parameters like uh, ph the do bod x and um, uh, um, pollution load i mean microbial load etc i think uh, see if you see a b and c class virtually 
A, B, zero, and one, almost 85% of the lakes are very bad. Uh, they are coming under E category. That means to say that it is not worth for anything. So these, uh, the, similarly, the uh, rivers and uh, see other streams and pollutions are also um, in a very, very bad shape. Uh, this is something what the government of India knows and it is necessary that we should take care of the, these things. And uh, incidentally, uh, the groundwater is very bad and uh, but, uh, more than 20 cities in India, uh, including Bangalore, Chennai and Delhi, they are they're going to face a wrath by 2020. That is exactly the report by the, uh, by the, by the go government of India. So uh, coming back, uh, all world over 80% of the world wastewater leads to the environment without a treatment. I think this is uh, something what um, uh, <coughs> we seriously should, uh, should be looked at by developing countries. And in Indian scenario, uh, this is also reported by the, the uh, by, uh, by the um, Niti Ayog, where, uh, sorry, Central Pollution Control Board, uh, see where sewage is not, uh, only 30% is treated, even that 30% is not also not uh, properly treated, but only 70% is still to be treated. I think this is a very serious case. This is the reason why our, our, our lakes, why our rivers, why our uh, see, groundwater, why our uh, see, they are polluted. I think unless this is uh, uh, seriously taken care by the, by the respective governments and the um, um, uh, state governments and the central government, I think we are in a serious problem. So apart from that, even in government, uh, even in the, most of the developed countries, for example, in uh, USA, if you look at these five major lakes in the world, I think they, they, they are well known, which is, um, Michigan, Ontario, uh, Eric, etc. These five, uh, see, you, they are also, they are facing a lot of uh, different type of pollutions. You can see the algae growth. I mean, because of so many new pollutants that are coming up. See, the, today, See, the, the bacteria or the virus are not stagnant. Are they, there are new uh, bacteria are coming up. See, pharmaceutical, as I said, pharmaceutical uh, things, I mean, um, pollutants are coming in a big way. Even uh, without knowing, the, see, these things are, as I said, uh, PFAS, uh, PFAS is one of the major problems. And that is also creating, even this water is extracted for drinking purpose. It has to be treated before, very well treated before the... <coughs> Before they, <clears throat> so I think uh, this is a universal problem. But the problem is not very severe in developed countries, but in our country it is very serious. Now uh, pollutants in different uh, sectors are impo uh, their impacts and uh, human health being ecosystem. I think we we could see here see human health settlements, agriculture, industry, and tourism recreation. These are, these are the pollution, what sort of pollution that is happening. See, so nature of water quality, deterioration, impacts of human ecosystem and responses. So this, this is a very important uh, factor. I think uh, we, we know from where all these uh, pollutants are coming. We should address them before they say things go out of control. So what is the impact of this in, in terms of financial impact for, uh, see the, uh, for the country? I think the economic impact, you see, these five um, uh, World, World Bank together with, uh, see, they have uh, many other uh, uh, foreign uh, institutions together, they studied this. And today, 2.4 trillion equal to 53.8 billion dollars worth of, see, every year we are losing because of bad sanitation. <coughs> there is a total report on this and it, it can be available uh, on the internet. And uh, you see, this is uh, costing almost, uh, see, two states uh, a budget. <clears throat> and we should really see it, uh, very serious on that. So uh, with this background and uh, today's what we are facing, a tremendous uh, problem of uh, the pandemic of COVID-19. So what is the, the this state of uh, see, this COVID-19 in the water and wastewater? That is exactly, See, the focus of this presentation is, so see, this is a 23rd April 2020, see, World Bank, World WHO, which is a unique organization for the entire world, has stated that, see, this virus is uh, <clears throat> from the feces, that is from the wastewater, uh, I mean, uh, are the, uh, uh, from the feces of the infected person appears to be low. 
and the current evidence suggests that the infection of a virus may be excreta in feces regardless of the area or signs of intestinal infection approximately 2 27 people have confi confirmed to see <clears throat> several indices that means see and uh, particularly it is clearly stating that that it uh, the um, um, transmission of um, uh, 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 virus uh, corona is not happening through water and presence of covid in uh, drinking water is also not so versus in uh, untreated uh, drinking water is possible uh, while the presence of uh, uh, covid virus in untreated drinking water is possible it has not been detected in drinking water supplies so this is something what uh, see the two reports of uh, one from uh, uh, see uh, and the feces uh, waste water another from drinking water so the second important one is about the center for disease and control and prevention so there he, they also say currently there is no evidence that the virus and the causes of covid 19 can be spread by people by drinking wa treated water so that means see uh, water which is uh, treated uh, see uh, systematically with the, all that uh, uh, required uh, processes uh, including uh, see aeration sediment uh, coagulation sedimentation filtration uh, disinfection i think disinfection is very important because See, these uh, bacteria and virus has to be killed through, uh, through disinfection. So COVID-19 is spread mainly through the close contact from person to person, not from this uh, treated water. Similarly, it also states virus that cause COVID-19 has found in feces and some patient diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, is. However, it is unclear whether the virus found in feces may be capable of causing COVID-19. So this is the two reports uh, which are highly recognized from uh, see from all over the world one is uh, who and another is from cdc <coughs> now apart from these two there are some uh, sewage uh, <coughs> some universities who have also said we should be very careful <coughs> sewage poses potential covid uh, 19 transmission risk and experts warn so uh, see here uh, from uh, University of Stirling. So uh, uh, this is this is a report where they also say that environmental biologists of University of Stirling have warned that the potential spread of uh, sewage must be ne must not be neglected in the battle of protecting human health. So this is a warning. I think we should uh, see particularly uh, doing a disinfection and all that is very very important. And we should uh, the response to global pandemic has focused on the preventing person to person transmission. However, experts now believe that virus could be also could also be spread in wastewater. This is from <clears throat> uh, 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 University of Sterling. There is also reports from uh, uh, Massachusetts uh, where they have also said the similar thing. And uh, see the problem. This could be public <laughs> health officials distancing measures to implement the precautions. Healthcare workers hard to take. Experts also say that wastewater detection of SARC. Uh, uh, could be could not be only in uh, supplement the medical testing but also in early warning system so they are still in the in the process of uh, see a lot of work is going on for uh, see in in this sector see a lot of money is involved in this in uh, many many universities for example uh, see even in uh, um, uk and uh, spain see uh, for example spain also uh, in university of barcelona found uh, traces of virus in uh, barcel particles in uh, now <clears throat> uh, coronavirus, uh, sars cov are found in sewage samples in the city of uh, uh, Florinosis in South Brazil in November 27, 2019, two months before the first clinical case was reported in Brazil. <clears throat> I think, uh, see, a lot of uh, work is also going on to, to establish whether there is a, a, a possibility of uh, availability of uh, this coronavirus in, in drinking water and wastewater transmission. So uh, this, this is a, so lastly, I think I would like to give you some guideline and advisory impact of COVID water is COVID water viruses have not been detected in drinking water supplies. And based on the current evidence, the, uh, the risk of water supply is low. Uh, conventional centralized water treatment methods that use filtration, disinfection, uh, that is uh, disinfection by, by, by different methods. Uh, see, and other accidents uh, should uh, inactivate the uh, COVID-19 virus. Uh, the, for protection against viral infection, 
uh, 0.5 milligram for residual chlorine are recommended, and at least the 30 minutes contact time of which are with pH of uh, less than eight. In places where centralized treatments and safe fiber water supply are not available, the number of household and water treatment technologies are effective in removing, destroying the viruses, including boiling of water. So this is something I just gave you some impression of what, in terms of water and wastewater, what is the scenario worldwide? I think this uh, picture will give you some Im impression how this uh, whole thing happens right from defecation and getting into the lake and then treating and ultimately people drinking this water. This is uh, 12 facts about COVID-19 virus in water. <clears throat> Coming back, uh, see, uh, <clears throat> wastewater is a valuable resource. Um, see, less than half uh, wastewater on the global scale is collected, even less than 20% of its treated water before released back into the nature. This startling at the, the failure to treat wastewater can create a severe damage to the water environment. That means, as I already shown you, that 80% of water still not treated. That is a, one of the greatest problem for anything to happen. I think this is something, uh, uh, see, even the Sustainable Development UN has also given 17 uh, <clears throat> uh, issues which are by 2030 they should address, every country should address. Under that, item number six is most important and where this, these things have been uh, indicated. Traditionally, wastewater has been considered merely a liability that needs to be dealt with. However, the paradigm shift is happening where we are beginning to look at the potential value of wastewater for energy and production of resource and recovery. Here, I would like to uh, mention that now today, uh, most, uh, many of the countries are embarking using this wastewater for drinking purpose. For example, Singapore, for example, Brisbane, for example, uh, see Santiago, for example, Texas. See, many cities are including, uh, see, um, including that um, the first one to use uh, uh, directly uh, treated water is um, uh, in uh, uh, Virat, uh, Nami uh, capital of Namibia. So the things are now moving. Wastewater is one of the important resource, uh, not only for agriculture, not only for uh, industry, not only for see um, aquifer recharge, but also for portable and non-portable purposes. Approximately 2% of world total energy consumption used for collecting, treating water. Thanks to technology, I think thanks to technology, today we can able to generate an electricity from wastewater treatment plant and the entire water and entire energy can be generated for what is required for running of the plant. Now hundreds of uh, treatment plants are running uh, see, uh, with, the, <coughs> with their own uh, power generation, uh, which is called energy neutral. So. I, I just told you that this uh, this is a this I just skipped because 17 percent of our uh, population, only four percent of the world's fresh water, and uh, so much of defecation, etc. And uh, a comparison between China and India. so China has 20 percent, but we have they have seven percent. So this is exactly what uh, I was telling. And unless we make wastewater as a resource by treating all that 70 percent, which is not still treated which is very most important, which is going to be a very important resource. <clears throat> now, India is suffering from worst water crisis in the history, according to June report and uh, a think tank of Niti Aayam. See, waterless countries. <clears throat> see, India is, uh, see, is, is stopping. Just 10 countries account 60% of the world population without access to clean water. I already shown you that uh, see, we are 120th out against 122 countries of the quality of water. And India is 19.33% is uh, not uh, qualitative. So I, I just told you wastewater is a renewable source. It is a resource recovery and all that. And we can generate 100% of, uh, I mean, pure, uh, better water for all practical purposes, including wastewater, for the, including for drinking. So energy generation and also nutrient uh, replacement. So here, <clears throat> Recycle of wastewater to enhance resilience. So Texas, Santiago, has uh, the program will be proven technology to clean recycled water, produce safe and high quality of drinking water, and provide reliable and sustainable water supply. I think this is something what I just was telling you. Turn the uh, wastewater treatment plant in renewable energy. I think uh, the renewable energy. I think the seven trend net is so um, the renewable energy and uh, bio, bio fertilizer 
with excess renewable energy is sold back to the national grid while the high quality of uh, biofilter is produced to the digestion uh, during digestion process is used for, for <clears throat> No, this is not only, you see, the very high quality of uh, um, fertilizers uh, can also be uh, uh, produced from that. So this is, the, uh, this is again, again the uh, phosphorus uh, which is recovered. And uh, by doing all that, not only we are treating this water to required standards and making it available for our purposes of the, all, of, all that I have said, but in addition, you can also make a money. I mean, in fact, it is a circular economy in the sense we are getting back a lot of our, uh, <coughs> finances from selling water, uh, selling energy. Even see more energy can be sent to poor digestion. You can do that, and you can you can sell that energy produced to the uh, to the grid and make money. And similarly, see phosphorus recovery can also make huge amount of money, which is not available in uh, you see in easily from other countries. And lastly, the, uh, the fertilizer also you can make use of that. So, in a nutshell, what I like, I would like to say is not only treating this water uh, to the highest standards, but also you can also recover a lot of money in the form of circular economy. So, my to take home message is wastewater increasing worldwide. I think uh, as population increases, there is an increase in wastewater. Vast majority releases without treatment. So, that is exactly what I said, 80%. Affordable treatment options are available. I think today, whatever type of ultimately you want a quality of water, that type of treatment is available. Reliable and sustainable source of water is, is most important. Sustainable source of energy, nutrient, and other ecosia byproducts is, as I, as I already mentioned, it should be embarked. I think in circular economy, wastewater use and byproduct recovery can generate new business opportunity by helping the finance sanitation services. And lastly, the cost improve <coughs> cost of improved wastewater management are overridden by the benefits in terms of human health, socio-economic and development, and environment sustainability. Essential for achieving 2030 agenda. That's what uh, the UN has uh, for, uh, mentioned. Uh, 17 uh, uh, issues where see the, um, every country in the world has to uh, do that. This is one of the essential achieving 2030 agenda for sustainable development. I think in in Indian scenario, what I, I mean, wastewater is must must be in order to keep uh, rivers, lakes, and streams mm -hmm. and groundwater, coastal water, coastal water healthy, environment clean, and central and state government should allocate adequate budget for this purpose. Utility should take advantage of resources recovery and reuse, and also address circular economy in that. All state governments should come out with a policy on how to use final treated effluent to different activities such as for agriculture, industry, etc. There is a need to collaboration among the water industry research establishment, think tanks, and government to leverage, <coughs> leverage learning from uh, the current pandemic and create a strategy for future preparedness. Uh, see, this is exactly what. So this is the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, <coughs> uh, um, <coughs> you can go ahead, uh, see. Um, hello? Hello, Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Ah. sir. Sir, thank you very much, sir. Ah. I completed. I... It was a very nice presentation, sir. An excellent presentation and uh, very informative. Thank you very much, sir. <clears throat> and um, Mohidin? Shankar, you can give concluding remarks, sir. Yeah, yeah. Just. Thank you, sir. Tipe Swami, sir. Thank you, sir. Tipe Swami. And the presentation. Other potential is sharing. Somebody is sharing. Sir, you can. Uh, you are still sharing, sir. Sorry? Tipe Swami, sir. You are still sharing. Please. Uh, Because we cannot start the session. Mm. Mm. Okay. And run money. So, um, 
uh, as our uh, honorable principal has uh, said so we are going to give the concluding remarks in another 5 minutes so whatever uh, we have just seen in the last uh, right few speakers uh, slides i just uh, go through that in 5 minutes and conclude and uh, first of all we should understand the environmental episodes are the cause for creating the loss for creating the loss of course the meuse valley belgium was the first of the modern episodes we had and where the sulfur trioxide problem right caused lot of deaths then of course the holodomor and the donora pozarica london los angeles is called the air pollution is defined as the disease of wealth in los angeles because of the automobile exhaust and of course we had the new york so you can see one thing that all these episodes the deaths have occurred during the month of november to december or january to february or even october certain times so what does this mean that means it is not only the man made disaster that is causing all this but there is a natural factor in, involved in this so natural factor is actually aggravating the episodes that is what uh, i would uh, rather say and of course the london uh, killer smog has uh, right uh, has caused a, a lot of uh, i think at least two episodes are there which uh, record the london killer smog and of course the new york thanksgiving day episode is also right uh, a very uh, important one and of course the saveso is another one and uh, that is near the north milan italy so uh, it's a, a petrochemical waste right the discharge into water then bhopal gas tragedy all of us know is 30 tons of uh, the mic gas was injected into the atmosphere and there were 15000 people instantaneously were killed and 6 lakh uh, were affected and subsequently killed and uh, the next one is the chernobyl north ukraine episode of course the nuclear reactor blast and the nuclear leaks and of course the piper alpha is of course another episode where the uk gas company had to let out the waste water then of course the recent times the very latest the 7th may 2020 we had a very unfortunate incident of vizag uh, what is called the gas tragedy and uh, we know that is in the, it's a 45 days of lockdown in covid 19 caused the kills here and especially people were blinded actually and please note that this uh, belongs to the ub group earlier and uh, uh, subsequently taken over by the lg group and uh, they manufacturing uh, actually the styrene and what happens is the styrene has to be kept in constant uh, uh, what i should say agitation but unfortunately during lockdown it was kept uh, right without agitating so in the what happened is that uh, there is a kind of a self polymerization started occurring and the temperature was raised to 60 60 degrees centigrade and uh, subsequently raised to 155 degrees centigrade that means it's a vaporization temperature then of course you know the tragedy happened and all of us know about it in the recent times and uh, of course uh, what is the next uh, kind of a thing so all these tragedies have been occurring over a period of time and therefore conventions were caused uh, called by the united nations and uh, we had starting from 1972 they just uh, thought that uh, all the prime ministers should join together and uh, uh, alleviate this problem so it was a 1969 it is called the love valley disaster which caused the greatest trouble with the ground water being polluted lakhs of people died in usa and uh, what happened is of course the stockholm a uh, resolution was taken that is the first uh, earth summit was uh, right called in 1972 and the stockholm resolution was taken up in which a subject called environmental engineering was introduced throughout the world and therefore all the engineering colleges the departments were called department of civil and environmental engineering starting from the stockholm declaration and thereafter of course we had uh, the starting of the pollution control boards and unep was born that is the 1972 so convention on international trade and the wild flora etc in 
and the Nairobi Declaration in 1982. That was the second of the Earth Summits. And of course, next was the Vienna Convention and next was the Brundtland Report, then the Earth Summit, and of course, the Agenda 21, UNFCC. And uh, next, please. And of course, the Convention on Biological Diversity or the Biodiversity, and all these things have been uh, uh, taking up. And of course, the Kyoto Protocol in 1997 to fight the global warming by reducing the greenhouse gas and of course, the carbon footprint mitigation was uh, just called for in Kyoto Protocol. And developed and historical offenders had to pay for it. And of course, we just introduced what is called the carbon credit system. <clears throat> and of course, we had the other protocols and the Stockholm Conventions. And uh, as uh, told, and uh, of course, the Rio Plus, after the, the, again, 2012, remembering the first Rio uh, what Earth Summit, it is just a conference. And of course, the Paris Agreement, this is the latest one, 2016 July, we have signed, our Prime Minister has signed. What do you mean by this? So we are, of course, uh, agreeing to cut the carbon footprint. And uh, carbon footprint means it is CO2, not CO or any other uh, kind of thing. Carbon footprint has to be cut according to the Paris Agreement. And uh, India is a signatory for this. And uh, of course, it started in 2015. We signed it in 2016, July. And uh, this means that all of us, we have to go for a law to enforce the carbon footprint mitigation. And the latest or the very recent one, of course, is the Kigali Agreement. Kigali is uh, capital of Rwanda. And uh, it, uh, the UN United Nations, we had a uh, uh, right uh, conference there. And of course, Kigali Agreement uh, was uh, brought about the amendments to 1987, Montreal Protocols, and aims to reduce hydrofluorocarbons by 80 to 85% by 2045. And it is binding on all the members. Binding means legally it is valid. So this is going to be the kind of thing. And all our research scholars and the faculty who want to apply for, say, for example, funding from top institutes, et cetera, right, will have to operate from these kinds of this, right, uh, pro protocols. And unless they go and learn these protocols, they will not be able to get any funding from the international authorities or national authorities or DST or whatever it is. So please note that it is my advice that all of you please go through these protocols. It's also uh, required for getting the funds for your research projects. So the entire uh, uh, importance is given for this, right, uh, the protocols. And the list of Earth Summits, I would say, 1972, we had one Earth Summit, that is the Stockholm, right? 1982, we had the Nairobi, Kenya. 1992, we had Rio de Janeiro. And 2002, right, we had a World Summit in Johannesburg, South Africa. In 2012, of course, we had, uh, of course, uh, in Rio again. So 2022, probably it will happen in Delhi or Jakarta. So we are just hoping that in the Earth Summit 2022, India is going to be right to <clears throat> mastering the techniques and is going to lead the world. So India is expected to lead the world in environmental control and the loss. And, uh, and uh, we are really upbeat about this. I think thank you for giving me this opportunity to present. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, just to conclude on this, so I thank all the right uh, <clears throat> uh, resource persons who have given an eminent deliberation of the various aspects of the loss and the question and answers right would be taken, taken up. And there's a most important session, of course, is Dandam Dashagunam. In Panchatantra, they say the last aspect is Danda. That means you are the offender and you have to be punished. And now over to our honorable judge, sir, is Somashekar Badami, sir, for his deliberations on Danda Samhita. Is it audible? Yes, sir, it is audible. 
thank you for one and all first of all uh, i must uh, congratulate and uh, extend a warm uh, thankful to the amc uh, engineering college dr shashi shankar dr ej natraj and moidin as well as i also extend my warm uh, thankful to dr mk ramesh who deliberate uh, the legal aspect in respect of the environmental law and also dr mn tipper somi deliberate uh, regarding uh, water issues and uh, mr shashi shankar concluded the very nice uh, deliberation with uh, uh, giving uh, very very good uh, informative materials to the audience and now i being a member secretary of the district legal service authority bangalore urban it is my bounden duty to create awareness regarding the legal services act to the audience also we we all know the constitution is the our mother law of every law and accordingly as per say article 39a of the constitution of india provides for free legal aid to the poor and weaker sections of the society and ensure justice to all based on this legal services authorities act 9th november 1987 the legal services authorities act is enacted by the central government and uh, that day november 9th day is uh, celebrating by us uh, all the uh, units of uh, legal services authorities as a national legal services day it is uh, peculiar to note that the main object of this legal services authority is to create awareness about the law of the lands and also government uh, enactments as well as the government schemes to the entire public at large and uh, to provide free legal aid and to dissolve the resolve the dispute between the parties by alternative dispute resolution method uh, through compromise by way of uh, or by organizing uh, lok adalats and also mediation conciliation and arbitration by the leadership of our honorable executive chairman uh, sri justice uh, arvind kumar ji uh, our state uh, karnataka state legal services authority taking all steps to achieve all these uh, uh, set of goals to access the justice to all our uh, honorable chairman uh, anil sri katti uh, anil katti the district legal services authority is also uh, sharing with us uh, to reach uh, this goal and uh, with this background now we have received several questions from the audience uh, apart from those uh, we have chosen to answer three questions basically the those questions are most important to, to elaborate all these things in a sum up matter sum up manner and accordingly first question is what is uh, protective policy and uh, improvistic uh, policy guaranteed under the constitution of india as per my knowledge by reading preamble of our constitution it is very clear that we ourselves declare that india to be a secular state to the aid of it our constitution consists various provisions to safeguard the rights of minorities in part 3 of article 14 onwards on the principles of equality before law and equal protection of law as per article 15 prohibits any sort of discrimination on the ground of race religion caste sex place of birth or residence to the current topic is concerned part 4 is a very relevant of our constitution deals with the directive principles of state policy it is an obligation of the state to protect environment article 39e 47 and 48a of our constitution imposed duty on the state 
to secure the health of the public improve public health and protect and improve the environment by safeguarding the forest and wildlife of the country with this background with this uh, with the, with this uh, obligation there are six laws relating to protection of environment of india were enacted and uh, already uh, sir uh, mn ramesh sir dr mn ramesh has enunciated and uh, up, uh, the first and foremost important protective law is the uh, the indian forest act 1927 the wildlife protection act 1972 water prevention and control of pollution act 1974 which is already elaborately deliberated by uh, the eminent uh, dr mn tipesomi and uh, the forest act uh, 1980 forest conservation act 1980 air prevention and control pollution act 1981 the environmental protection act 1986 and uh, 1986 these are the six enactments in our uh, india uh, control all these things as a preventive uh, as a protective policy methods in spite of this uh, it is uh, very very sad to say what uh, mr uh, dr mk mn tipe for me allowed uh, deliberated about uh, pollution is a evil problem in the world and uh, to protect the same as uh, shashi shankar says dandam dashagunam uh, is the policy to adopt uh, this one to everyone but uh, the central pollution control board i think uh, central pollution control board and state pollution control board must be proactive uh, must be more for proactive in this regard because the power given to them under the environmental acts acts and the second question uh, before us is is there any provision under our constitution to fix the responsibility on individual to protect the environment by 42nd amendment of the constitution in the year 1976 fundamental duties are introduced under part 4a in article 51a one amongst those duties is to preserve natural environment accordingly it is moral obligation and responsibility to every citizen of this country to protect the environment well the solution for the pollution is a evil problem what uh, mr uh, mn tipesomi is uh, elaborated is the obligation and responsibility of every citizen every citizen must be caution every citizen must be caution and uh, we must care for the environment and we must fight for protecting it and the, the third question what i chosen to like answer answer is is there any acts with regard to disposal of medical waste uh, municipal solid waste and disposal of old batteries basically uh, my answer is to this question is uh, basically the environment protection act enacted in 1986 to regulate all forms of waste bio medical waste management rules of 2016 with amendment from time to time the central pollution control board and state pollution control boards are issue, are issued various guidelines for handling collection transportation treatment and disposal of bio medical waste generated from treatment of covid-19 patients and suspects as uh, uh, my uh, tipesomi is already told about all these things and uh, with this uh, with this uh, uh, deliberation i give information regarding the penal laws under the water act the section 25 and 26 is uh, 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 section 24 to 26 are most important uh, the water act of uh, the, the, 
the water prevention and control of pollution act 1974 section 24 deals with the prohibition on use of stream or well for disposal of polluting matter etc no person shall knowingly cause or permit any poisonous noxious or polluting matter determined in accordance with such standards as may be laid laid down by the state board to enter whether directly or indirectly into any stream well sewer on land to enter into any stream any other matter which may tend either directly or combi in combination with the similar matter to impede the proper flow of the water of the stream in a manner leading or likely to lead to a substantial aggravation of pollution due to other causes of uh, its uh, consequences uh the, the, the with this background the consent is required to uh, the consent is required to establish any industry operation or process or any treatment and uh, disposal system or any extension or addition to there to bring into use new or altered outlet begin to make new discharge continue existing discharge make an uh, accordingly to get the consent it is uh, uh, to establish an industry or any any establishment make an application with the prescribed fee fee based on capital investment as well as industry category that is red orange and green and the karnataka state pollution control board is to grant or refuse consent with a, 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 by considering application within 4 months Uh, while uh, if uh, if uh, pollution control board uh, decided to grant the consent is always with conditions one is point of discharge use of outlet uh, quantity of discharge quality of discharge validity period any other condition uh, any other condition which is deems fit according to the circumstances is circumstances and the state uh, pollution control board may also review consent conditions to worry or revoke it this is the main uh, provision uh, which is penalized to the uh, establishment which is effluent the water to the sewage contrary to the water act uh, water enactment uh, the, that is why i already told uh, the pollution control boards must be proactive in uh, Uh, effect in giving the effect to the law itself because this is pow the power is given to the state pollution control board may review consent conditions to worry or revoke it and uh, also it has got power to cancel the consent also and uh, uh, refusal of consent uh, re reasons must be indicated and the state pollution control board may review a refusal and make uh, orders if for deems fit uh, that that is why proactive of actions taken by the pollution control board central pollution control board and state pollution control board is very much needed to uh, prevent pollution uh, pollution problem and uh, uh, the duties of industries and local bodies to have consent uh, before giving a consent the local bodies must uh, uh, taken into consideration to have consent for discharge of trade or sewage effluent comply with con consent conditions furnish information called for by state pollution control board intimate state pollution control board about any accident or other unforeseen act or event um, the duties of the industries and local bodies is also enunciated in uh, section 31 of the water act uh, if any poisonous noxious or polluting matter is being discharged or likely to be discharged into a stream well sewer on land due to accident or other unforeseen act or event resulting in pollution or likely pollution of water then the industry or local authority should intimate the state pollution control board about such accident or unforeseen act or event uh, accordingly there is a penal provision is also 
uh, incorporated uh, in section 45e of the water act wherein uh, any contravention of the rules or uh, the the water act provisions then there is an imprisonment for about 3 months to 7 years and fine up to rupees 10000 additional fee up to rupees 5000 per day because every day effluent every day effluent or every day contravention is to be considered as offense and accordingly it is a penal provision it should be more well, we must more use more by the help of uh, pollution control boards and uh, uh, we, we, the water act also uh, gives scope to prosecute those uh, establishment regarding uh, by, by filing uh, criminal miscellaneous uh, cases before the uh, jurisdictional courts for restraining orders and also uh, the uh, initiate criminal proceedings for uh, punishment is concerned and uh, the cases to be filed by board officer and uh, any person if uh, want to file 60 days notice of uh, alleged offense and uh, of his intention to make complaint to, to the board and persons uh, in uh, oh, who are the persons the question arises who are the persons to be penalized in case of a company under section 47 an occupier every person who at the time the offence committed was in charge of uh, and was responsible to the company for the conduct of the business of the company the company any director manager secretary or other officer if it is proved that the offence has been committed with the consent or convenience of or is attributable to any neglect on their part in case of government departments under section 42 the head of the department any person who violates the law he is punishable and accordingly of the water act given the scope for penalize penalized person who violate the law and one more thing is very essential to bring here the evil problem of pollution is a worldwide problem and it can be prevented by hesitating before the court of law only because the uh, even we can uh, use article 32 and uh, article 226 of the constitution of india by filing a writ petitions before the honorable supreme court or uh, the honorable high courts of the concerned states Uh, uh to hesitate the matter with regard to what uh, issues are shown by mr tipeswami in his deliberation regarding uh, uh, the uh, effluent and uh, 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 and uh, polluted water by the establishments with this uh, i conclude my deliberation and uh, the legal services authority the, the district legal service authority and karnataka state legal service authority is always working together for uh, for uh, giving justice to all first uh, one one more thing is uh, lastly one more thing is uh, uh, is necessary to speak here Riga, uh, under the legal services authorities act there are three authorities Uh, the national legal services authority and uh, in all the states uh, karnataka uh, uh, the state legal services authorities and also in all the districts uh, there is a district legal services authority likewise uh, there are three committees uh, are working under the act to achieve the justice to all uh, the supreme court legal services committee and high court legal service committee and in all the talukas taluka legal services committees all are working together regarding uh, achievement of the goal of uh, the objects of uh, legal services authorities and uh, by the stakeholders uh, uh, our stakeholders are uh, uh, panel ad- panelist advocates as well as the paralegal volunteers with this uh, i conclude uh, yeah, yeah, 
if any more if any more information or any more um, questions actions actions regarding the pollution matter is concerned if uh, yeah, uh, uh, the audience may be approached either karnataka state legal services authority or district legal services authority or national legal services authority and uh, they may take appropriate uh, legal action to control the same and give justice in respect of this uh, matter is concerned thanking you one and all and uh, uh, i once again uh, very much thankful and uh, 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 to shashisha dr shashi shankar dr ag nagraj and moidin and uh, also the eminent speaker who are experts in the field uh, mk ramesh dr mk ramesh uh, who is a legal uh, uh, he, he deliberated the legal thesis regarding the uh, 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 the this environment law and also mn tippe somi who deliberate excellently and very nicely and uh, very good informative and i think all the audience uh, taken this uh, informative method the uh, informative subjects and uh, we must the last conclusive word is uh, as a responsible citizen of india it is our responsibility and duty to protect the pollution and to protect the environment and accordingly with our utmost care and uh, efforts we must take care and uh, all, and uh, pr to protect the environmental problem and uh, uh, in the in the meanwhile as uh, rightly told uh, shashi shankar uh, one uh, thing is uh, uh, i remember uh, it is 30 years back i think uh, when i was uh, just uh, enter into the practice after completion of my llb in the year 1989 i think uh, it is uh, it was uh, in the year 1990 or 91 we uh, one uh, eminent uh, uh, person yes, dr sir. sr remat we have filed 17 uh, public interest litigations with the aid of just uh, it was enacted the legal services authority act was just enacted in the year 1987 and uh, the four four to five months four to five years was elapsed and uh, at that time in the year 1990 91 uh, in karnataka uh, we are the first person to seek legal aid from the uh, karnataka state legal services authority uh, sorry uh, the under the legal services uh, authority then uh, prevailing uh, under the government and uh, 1 lakh 25000 court fees is uh, released for the public interest litigation and uh, uh, the subject matter is in uh, the in kumarapatnam rana in rana in haveri district kumarapatnam uh, there is a polypipers unit is there uh, you know, the they, they were without any scientific methods directly release the water chemical water into the tungabhadra river and because of this uh, what uh, the tipeswami shows uh, fishes were uh, died and uh, on the bank uh, and uh, the villagers who are uh, residing on the bank of the said river uh, were uh, were uh, infected by skin diseases and uh, some other uh, horrible diseases and uh, their nuts their nuts were uh, lost within uh, 24 or 30 hours by uh, catching the fish in the river and uh, all these uh, things uh, will uh, uh, scientifically we collected and uh, uh, assembled the same and agitated it before the uh, civil, uh, civil civil court of uh, uh, rani bennur 17 fishermen were ready to fight against the polypopers and uh, by taking legal aid, legal help from the uh, authorities, uh, by investing 1,25,000, we have uh, hesitated, uh, we have instituted uh, 17 uh, shoots for damage, claiming damages of rupees, uh, four, uh, then 14,000 uh, against the polypopers. What happened? 
it was uh, the, pro the proceedings was going on uh, three four years and uh, in all the aspects one 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 by one one by one they raised the points and all the points of law we won and ultimately the polyfibers people uh, the uh, colluding with the fishermans uh, giving by giving uh, rupees 50000 to each fisherman uh, they compromise settling outside the purview of the court they want uh, they they requested uh, to the fishermen not to record the compromise this is the effect why, why i am uh, why i am uh, uh, referring this incident is the establishment is always uh, fear about the law the establishment uh, the shashi shankar rightly said dandam dashanam is the uh, penal law uh, when when we file uh, uh, the damages suit if uh, it is it was recorded in a court of law by compromise what they have settled outside the purview of the court then the effect will be into the entire international uh, establishments because of this uh, they have thought and uh, colluding with the fishermen uh, they have collapsed our aim of uh, preventing this uh, moral object of uh, 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 pollution control uh, at that time. This was one of the incident in my career occurs and uh, uh, Shashi is also very well know about it uh, yeah, because uh, he was worked for polypropers for some years uh, as uh, yesterday itself he told me. And with this uh, I once again thankful to one and all and uh, district legal service authority is grateful to the AMC uh, for uh, uh, organizing uh, this wonderful uh, uh, topic uh, by webinar today and uh, it i think it reaches to the public uh, to the heart of the public uh, at large and also to the audience particularly to the audience and uh, audience thanking you thank one and all thank you sir with the permission of our honorable principal i will uh, uh, give the vote of thanks and uh, it was really a very nice uh, session for all of us and uh, particularly our honorable judge uh, somashekar badami sir has uh, delineated with the practical experiences and even i reminisce his presence with along with Dr. C. S. Shastri of IIT Madras and Dr. Agarwal of IIT Kanpur, myself. And Badami sir was a young BCom graduate just coming out of uh, the college. And uh, along with the SR Hiramat, who had come from Chicago, we have worked and uh, we have done uh, the Tungabhadra River Water, Water Survey from Irony to Mailara, 40 kilometer stretch. And uh, it is really my good fortune that today, right, we connected back. Thank you very much, sir, for such an illustrious uh, lecture and uh, such thank a very you. informative lecture, sir. We are indebted to you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much, sir. Then have our uh, professor of environmental law, Dr. M.K. Ramesh, is also a very great uh, professor who has been right always helping us in any kind of a resolution or whatever the uh, right uh, knowledge that has to be given regarding the law or the international law, etc. And uh, and the very fact that he comes from National Law School of India University represents, you know, his case for candidacy for uh, the future uh, United Nations uh, assignments for him. I thank you very much, sir, Dr. M.K. Ramesh, sir. And of course, uh, Tipe Swami, sir, of course, is very well known to Dr. A.G. Nataraj and myself is personally, and uh, he has been a ocean of knowledge, as technical knowledge, and as an engineer, chief engineer, Right, he always right to use the technology right for solving the problems, and uh, is a very rare kind of an engineer who has been always helping the student community, academia, and uh, of course industry also to get the proper solution. I thank uh, thank you, sir, uh, engineer Tipe Swami, sir. Thank you very much for your uh, time that was given to you uh, to us, and of course. Uh, uh, we have uh, right uh, uh, I have to thank uh, my honorable management and particularly Dr. K.R. Paramahamsa sir 
for blessing me and uh, before any webinar right i take his personal blessings and i just uh, right thank you very much sir and of course uh, 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 shrimati geeta madam is a vice chairperson and of course rahul executive vice president who has been the kingpin of all these webinars that are going on here at amc engineering college and of course uh, monica madam who is the <clears throat> right uh, vice president of the amc institutions and uh, our beloved principal who has always been a guiding light for all of us and uh, telling us what to do and what not to do and how to correct things and everything and uh, we thank uh, all of you sir and uh, of course mohitin for coordinating and uh, of course uh, mustaq sir who has been totally 24 bar 7 he has been helping all of us uh, mustaq sir in particular from computer science department and all my colleagues and hods all my students i thank you and all the participants in particular and even people from iit karakpur have connected with us nit warangal connected with us and uh, even so many other premier institutes jntu vtu colleges and uh, all the people have jain everybody has connected and i thank all of you sir thank you very much and we conclude the thing and there is a small announcement by mohiuddin regarding the feedback sir we will conclude this session with a great thanks to all the stakeholders thank you very much sir hello thank you very much sir uh, for your uh, nice session uh, all the participants you will get the feedback uh, after 24 hours this uh, of this session and then if you fill the feedback form then you will automatically you will get the certificate ah uh, once the submission of feedback e certificate will be generated and sent to registered mail id thank you sir thank you very much and uh, thank if you. it is over so with the permission of our principal we will close the session thank you sir thank you very thank much. you somshekar sir tipa swami sir thank you very much we shall meet personally thank you very much thanks shashankar for organizing thank you very much sir thank you within thank you thank you, sir. Thank you sir all my colleagues and head of the department thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you somshekar sir 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 is it audible yes sir yes sir it's audible oh thank you very much sir sir tipa swami sir you are in mute sir you need to unmute okay ah. thank you sir da thank you very much shashi shashi shankar thank, thank you very you much very dr thank dr natraj thank, thank, thank you very much hello Thank you thank you sir thank you shall meet sir thank you thanks thanks everyone